cannot get rid of it. <laughs> I found that out. The humble lighthouse, now owned by a designer from New York City, attracts some high wattage personalities. There's been some interesting people come here to visit. I've met Martha Stewart and had some experiences with Martha Stewart. Regrettably, Smith is struck by a sudden attack of discretion and clams up on his celebrity dish. Still, if the glitterati make an occasional appearance on this rugged coast, it's the region's raw, unadorned beauty that's the real star here on the Scudic. I would say Scudic Peninsula as it is now maybe was a little bit more akin to how Mount Desert Island was maybe 20 years ago. This is the best part of the whole Acadia Park. Don't you find it very peaceful over here? Okay, time now for uh. the ongoing pronunciation debate. You heard the park ranger say Mount Desert, correct? Right. <laughs> You've, we've heard both, You're and right. we've always heard both. So we checked with lifelong Downeaster Larry Smith out at the lighthouse. He said that the locals have always called it Mount Desert, like something sweet you would have <laughs> after dinner, originally named by Samuel Champlain of France, the first European visitor. That's what they go with up there, so that's what we're going with. All right, there you go. Next on the menu, Dolph. Say what? It's a red kelp plus protecting the wild blueberry. I pledge to always use the word wild whenever I reference blueberry. The road through the Scudic portion of Acadia National Park runs one way along miles of coastline. For visitors, that means there's no avoiding the pickled wrinkle. It's kind of nice that the National Park is a one-way loop and you drive right by here to, to get out. There's nothing to eat or drink in the park, so people come out hungry and thirsty, and this is the obvious stop. <laughs> Ribeye steaks, ocean fresh seafood, and a fun vibe have made Birch Harbor's The Pickled Wrinkle a flat out success. And its curious name? Yeah, we thought of the name a few years before we bought the place. When Montana born Jesse Christensen moved here to his wife Sarah's hometown, he found out pickled wrinkles are a thing. Sarah is lobster fisherman's daughter. She's Always been into pickled wrinkles, which are kind of a, a byproduct of lobster fishing. A wrinkle is the local name for a carnivorous sea snail, which often finds its way into lobster traps. In the poorer days of Maine, they pickled them to preserve them through the winter and kind of little protein packed morsels, and it's become a local delicacy now. How local? Very local. It's very down east, even an hour and a half away in Bangor, people don't know what pickled wrinkles are. At first glance, the offerings might seem a bit more traditional at Joe Young's place. It is, after all, the classic down east tableau. That's a good oyster. A picturesque harbor, traps stacked high, and picnic tables loaded with lobster, crab, and dults. 
It's a red kelp. I'm wondering if you would like to try some doubts. This is a, a red kelp. Joe Young is a bit of an ambassador when it comes to dults. After all, he cultivates the seaweed alongside his oyster beds in the milk barn behind his home in the Scudic village of Korea. Dults, to me, is delicious. But dults isn't the only unusual item served up here. There's history as well. I opened a little gallery here in my fish house, and that was 2009. Actually, the gallery came before the restaurant. Young, a lobsterman, wanted to display the historical photographs of his late aunt, Louise Young. An accomplished photographer, Louise ran with a sophisticated crowd, including famed American painter Marsden Hartley, who lived with the Youngs in Korea for three years. Only one problem with the gallery, no one came. Young's wife suggested adding food. And uh, she was right, actually. So we started in 2010. We had a hot dog cart, two tables. Then gradually, word of mouth went out. Now we seat about 100 people. After 40 years on the water, Young is now grounded, a full-time restaurateur in this remote corner of the Scudic. Oh, and it's given this lifelong lobsterman a chance to try some new foods. I never ate lobster until 2010, when we were going to open this place. My wife said, you got to eat a lobster roll to know what they're like. But I love it, I love it. For dessert? Well, though not technically on the Scudic, it's hard to resist making the half hour drive to revisit one of our favorite stops ever, Wild Blueberry Land. When Columbus stepped off the boat, there was only four crops, four fruits here in the all of North America. Do you know what they were? Guess. There is no one wilder about the wild blueberry than Marie Emerson. Here, inside the world's largest blueberry, you'll find a shrine to this tiny jewel of a fruit, but there's trouble in wild blueberry land. Cultivated blueberries, the larger ones found in most supermarkets, imported from places like China and Peru, are flooding the market and driving prices down, threatening family farms like the one Marie and her husband Dell have here in Columbia Falls. I've even heard somebody call them real. Can you imagine calling them real when ours are real? Marie is asking everyone who comes in her store to take the wild pledge. I pledge to always use the word wild whenever I reference the wild Maine low bush blueberry. By doing so, I understand. The aim? To educate people that there is a difference. So look for the small wild blueberry. And once they taste them, they'll know. But there's so much difference. You have to taste the difference. All right, so only four fruits four. when Columbus landed, and they are? Cranberry. Raspberry, mm -hmm. Concord grape, and of course, the wild blueberry. And every time Marie hmm. Emerson hears the phrase, uh, American is apple pie, she has to bite oh, her tongue. I so perhaps see. her next campaign will be a petition to change that to blueberry pie. American is blueberry pie. I like that too. <laughs> I like them both. Next, ring that bell. I didn't go to bell school. Mostly trial and error. Pound that drum. If you can play a radio, you can play steel drum.
Acadia's dramatic landscape is a product of fire and ice. Molten magmas and giant ice sheets combine to create the iconic, much-loved Maine coastline, and at one unique spot on the Scudic Peninsula, the molten fires still burn hot and bright. You'll pardon the pun, but the end result has a definite appeal. U.S. Bells in Prospect Harbor handcrafted bronze bells. Dick Fisher started off making primitive cowbells sold from a pushcart in Copley Square back in the 70s. Before long, he moved on to wind bells. I got intrigued by the idea of something that makes sound, something that's outdoors, something that moves in the wind, kind of connection with nature. Fisher came to Prospect Harbor on the Scudic Peninsula and built his own foundry. The molten metal, about 2200 degrees Fahrenheit, is poured into sand molds. The sand has clay mixed in it, and when you pack it, it keeps the impression of, of however it's packed. Fisher's work has grown more sophisticated. From tiny dinner bells to heavy ship bells, his biggest sellers, the wind bells, with their unique design, the mahogany clapper placed outside the bell. Yeah, that's part of the sculpture and kin kinetics that I was interested in. I wanted the whole configuration to be a bit of a mobile. Thank you, Alexander Calder. <laughs> Creativity seems to have reverberated out from Fisher's Bells, also on the family compound, son Tim and his custom woodwork. Daughter-in-law Liza creates pottery in a giant wood-fired kiln, and wife Cindy is a quilter. Collectively, they call themselves Watering Co. Studios. Meanwhile, Dick Fisher continues to tinker with new shapes and designs, always seeking a more perfect, sweet, clear tone. I didn't go to bell school. Mostly trial and error. We turn now from brass bells to a full metal racket. It makes you smile. Yes, it makes you smile. Flash in the Pans, a local steel drum band based in nearby Blue Hill. Every Monday night during the summer, they pull out the pans and put on a banging party. Bunny Gibson lives near Bangor and thinks nothing of traveling over an hour to be part of the action tonight in Winter Harbor. You don't have to have any kind of musical talent at all. If you can play a radio, you can play steel drums. <laughs> Flash in the Pads, an unlikely Caribbean export that's become a perennial favorite here in the pine tree state, thousands of miles from the nearest palm. Isn't that funny? Yeah, it's amazing how popular steel pans are in Maine. I don't know, maybe we're all dreaming of warmer places. Mary Laurie is with Scudic Arts for All, sponsors of the concert tonight at Hammond Hall in Winter Harbor. The historic structure was slated for demolition when Scudic Arts for All came up with a better idea. So we stepped forward and said, we want it, and we're gonna fill it with performance and art and exhibits and activity. And so that's what we did, and it's really been an anchor on this end of town. The Scudic Peninsula, home of a section of Acadia National Park, may be best known for its outdoor appeals, but the area boasts a lively art scene as well. Just up the street, the Littlefield Gallery recently won Best Art Gallery in Maine for the second year running from Down East Magazine. And Scudic Arts for All keeps things hopping 12 months a year, especially when the pans heat up. We want people to get up and dance and have fun and yell and scream. And we want everybody to have fun and smile. That's why we're here. <laughs> That's awesome. And Scudic's Arts for All is celebrating its 21st year this summer, and they're going big. They're having a big celebration. Yeah, their annual festival begins on July 29th. It's a two-week festival. They have workshops. They have performances, uh, live performances. It's music, dance, mm. theater, film. It's quite an event, and they're looking forward to it. All right. Up next, meet the Naughty Boys Born to Do Business. <laughs> 